here, and then you, you automatically know now, you've been conditioned to understand, oh, there must be a staffing issue. So um, the, it is not something that we have had, um, and, and just because of our population, and it's so different, but they're no less productive than your typical staff. So we just wanted to share some ideas. Um, if you want to get us started. Sure. Uh, so this, this kind of came about, um, I've, I've hired three, um, in the six years we've been open, I've, I've hired three high-functioning special needs adults um, with varying degrees of success. Most of them, uh, first off, all three were fantastic employees, never called out sick. They were always on time, if not early. They loved being there. They loved interacting with the employees. Uh, and each one had their own unique, I guess, quirks that we had to work through. And we worked really closely with the parents um, when we hired them, very clear on expectations. Most of my success in working with them came from picking Karen's brain. Um, and I would go to her all the time on a show cop shop, hey, I've got this problem and this. One of them I had to actually let go. Um, and I was really struggling with that on the inside because I really didn't want to, but I, I had to uh, for certain reasons. And you know, Karen actually put me to, she's like, it's okay. It happens sometimes. You know, you, you, you can't give them that much special treatment when you're, you know, they might be jeopardizing something. He, he was prone, unfortunately, to my own outburst once in a while. And it escalated one time too far. And we had a serious talk with his parents, and we all agreed that it just wasn't working at that, at that time. Um, anyways, Karen was priceless in that. And I kind of felt selfish because I'm sitting here going, I'm like the only business owner in Surprise that's tapping into this wealth of knowledge and, and decades of experience. Um, how can we get this out there? And Karen had talked about her idea. So I mean, from what Karen told me, her whole idea for opening this was her employees were coming back to her saying, I can't find work. And so she started Spencer's Place in order to be able to help uh, adults, high functioning adults with special needs, um, which she calls the gray area. Because if you're lower functioning, there's lots of programs out there for you. But when you're higher functioning, there's really not a lot out there for you. So she created Spencer's Place, which I absolutely admired you guys for doing it. it was um, she was talking about wanting, now that she's had, been open two and a half years. Two and a half, almost two and a half years. Two and a half years. Um, she has people that have basically graduated from her program and training them with job skills, and now where do they move to? And talking with a lot of the other restaurant owners, especially here in Surprise, it's mostly lack of knowledge on how to hire, how to train, um, and how to work with adults with special needs. I didn't find it that challenging, but any of the challenges I had, like I said, I had Karen. Um, so we've just been back and forth just over the last year, especially just brainstorming and throwing out fun ideas and kind of having the little mind dump sessions or whatever. Um, and we came up with this idea, and again, 90% of this was Karen. The only thing I was was 10% of a, maybe a kick in the butt to, <laughs> to throw this little seminar together. Um, Working with the city, you guys know Janine? So we reached out to Janine, who's the head of the economic development for Surprise. Um, and the idea is to have a program that business owners participate in, and they'll have, we actually have designed the sticker, No Boundaries Marketing here at the Tech Accelerator, designed us a big sticker that will go on the businesses <coughs> and will promote it to the civilians, to the citizens, well, army guy and me, to the citizens, uh, that they will understand when they see this sticker on a business. This is a business that supports the special needs community here, especially in Surprise. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, but yeah. I'm just glad to see your wealth of knowledge getting out there in the public. This is our very first ever get together, and we're hoping that with the knowledge you guys get today, you guys will be willing to share that and spread it. And the next time we do this, hopefully in the next couple of months, it'll be twice as big. So thank you for being here today. Yes, the, the inaugural um, seminar. We're calling it Inclusive Workforce. Um, because not only do we want to promote hiring individuals with disabilities uh, to work various jobs, but they probably already are in your business. So um, disabilities are, as most of you know, um, sometimes guided with physical characteristics. They're identifiable, but oftentimes they're not, especially with mental illness and some forms of autism and 
a variety. So even when you come into our shop, there are some of our staff that you can identify because of their characteristics, um, their communication disorders, but there are some that you know, people walk away after having their drink made and they never knew this was an adult with a disability. So um, I think what's valuable is to learn the different angles, different aspects and ways that businesses can take part and benefit from this really untapped workforce. Um, I've asked Francisco to come and share a little bit because Francisco has um, some really good ideas and experience from two different angles when working with individuals with disabilities. So if you want to come up and just share a little bit from the, the GSE perspective come. and then now your, your new endeavor that would be yeah. very insightful. I would love to share some information. So, so my name is Fran. Um, I own and operate uh, Special Strong here in the West Valley. We basically provide fitness opportunities for individuals uh, with physical, mental, and cognitive challenges. Partner up with existing local gyms to provide those services. It's been really cool, speaking of inclusivity, just uh, these gyms opening up their doors and saying, hey, we are open, right? They don't necessarily have a sticker or a stamp next to their gym saying that that's the case, but by allowing Special Strong to come in and train, they, they are uh, showing that in, in essence. So, uh, prior to starting Special Strong, I uh, had uh, five years, I was at it, working at an agency here in Sun City, a surprise area. Um, for about a decade, the last five years, uh, being there, running the employment services, group supported employment to be specific. So it's basically meeting with local businesses um, to set up employment programs and opportunities. So reaching out to them saying, hey, we have this workforce, right? We have individuals that are coming into our program, to a, they're looking for employment. On our end, we have center-based employment. We're able to break down uh, you know, a, a specific skill into different steps and teach our, our clients how to go through those steps and how to grow in their independence in doing so. We have job coaches that help them with learning those things. And, uh, but center-based employment is limited, right? We all want to be able to go out and be part of the community. So we're coming out here now looking for ways to connect with, the, with different partners so that we can utilize those skills, right, um, that they've done in a center-based employment setting and be able to apply them in a community. And for those businesses, basically what we were sharing is, um, you know, because of the way that the, that Arizona and DDD is set up, and the uh, DES is set up, is we, and I get both from Special Strong and from families that I've spoken with, with uh, children with uh, disabilities, they're coming from different states because of what DDD offers here in Arizona. Amazing programs, whether it be uh, group, group homes, uh, ADH homes, rest rehabilitation, employment programs, day programs, it's all over the place compared to other states. We're very proud to, to, to be able to say that here in Arizona. So uh, as far as employment, you know, we have individuals that are being paid by the state to learn these skills and to be part of these employment programs. So when, when I would go out to local businesses, we weren't necessarily looking to have our, our clients employed by those businesses, but we were, uh, we were, they would be hiring or contracting our agency our group supported employment program to bring a workforce into their business, right? So for example, we had thrift stores that we were working with where we would be able to bring a certain amount of individuals, whatever was appropriate for that setting, whether it's a big place, small place, we would uh, discuss that with the business owner. And uh, they would go alongside job coaches, right? As an employment coordinator, I would just speak to them about what it was that their needs were. Uh, we would figure out ways to break down those tasks in a way that worked for our, the clients that we served and, and our workforce and then for those job coaches that we're going to be facilitating and making sure that those tasks were being done to completion to the standard that was uh, decided by those business owners. And then the job coaches are not only assisting and helping our, our uh, workers or our employees to learn those skills and to perform those tasks, but they're also ensuring that it's done to a, to a standard of, of good quality. So 
Um, so we were not only providing a workforce, uh, assurance that those things were gonna be completed to a, to a specific standard, uh, but we were also to able to provide uh, a lower cost of, uh, of the, those workforces or tasks to be completed uh, by the individuals that we were bringing in. Um, so yeah. how does somebody that's in business, and Jay can speak from uh, Benavia perspective on the same um, the, the perspective. Same perspective. How, so how do businesses that want to partner um, that have maybe some very rote specific skills, how do they get in touch with DTAs to hire, per se, someone to do those tasks? You lost me with DTAs. Well, or employment, employment programs. Employment programs, sorry. Employment programs, okay. Sorry. Um, well, through DDD, obviously, and their caseworkers and such. But, um, I mean, we do that program already. So we, we, we do the training ahead of time. Um, and then we go out and do the outreach to find the businesses directly. So mm -hmm. right now we have members working at Goodwill in Sun City West and Chick-fil-A right here in Surprise. And you'll never see more amazing employees in your life. <laughs> These true. folks are just, they're vibrant, they're dedicated, um, they bring excitement to every person that walks in the building, and they are there when they, when, whatever their working hours are, they're early and they leave late. Isn't it true? It's, it's, and they make other, the other employees even better. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is something that um, I've noted from a personal standpoint. I want, it, I want to be my best self. My employees want to be their best self, and it's just contagious. The, the empowerment, the energy, it's contagious. You can't help but be energized when you are working with someone who just laced up their shoes and ran through the door and said, <laughs> I'm here at seven o'clock in the morning. And you know, lets us know that they've been up since five and <laughs> couldn't wait to get to work. Or they come early and ask if they can just hang out until their shift starts. Um, it, it's like nothing you'll ever find or experience. They'll work for free. I, yesterday I had an employee call in and I asked um, Alex, which most of you probably know, short little Alex. I said, hey, Emily's not coming in today. Do you, um, do you wanna stay? And she goes, yeah, I'll just volunteer. Well, okay, <laughs> even better. And I said, are you sure? She's like, yeah. So, um, I mean, where does that happen? That it's just incredible. Um, I'm going, we'll have a Q&A at the end. I'm just going to continue with our... Okay. Our, thank you so much, Fran. I'm going to move on to just a little snippet of some of the feels when the media captures um, what happens in the shop. A cup of coffee. Well, in today's Community Connection, folks from all over the valley are pouring into this special coffee shop in the city of Surprise, where baristas here are percolating with purpose. Welcome to Spencer's Place. Spencer's Place is more than a coffee shop. This is where coffee lovers come to perk up, and not necessarily from the coffee. The premise, the reason behind Spencer's Place is over 80% of the world's population that have disabilities are unemployed. And this was our answer. Owner Karen York is a mom on a mission. Spencer is 31 years old and he has Down syndrome. And uh, when he was in school, when he was in elementary school, I never really considered that one day he wouldn't be. So when he entered high school, um, I had a full on panic attack. I don't know what happens after high school. And I was a special ed education teacher but still really didn't have any idea as to what happens to adults once they graduate. Karen quickly turned her panic into purpose. So, um, did a lot of research, did a lot of planning, praying, the whole gamut, and decided that I love coffee, I know coffee, and this was going to be my response. You guys are amazing. We'll celebrate next Wednesday. A response Karen has been brewing for years. It started while in the classroom, teaching her son Spencer and other special ed students how to grind after graduation. I take a little bit of pride in my high school um, days because I trained them to move and transition as adults into a job. And with a video, all of our 
employees are competitively employed. They earn a paycheck just like everybody else. They have a significant job training. These extraordinary employees are also learning important life skills to keep them grounded. They'll come to work early, they'll stay late, they'll ask to pick up shifts. Now that they're making money, there's a whole relief on life. I get to buy things. They can, um, they're is so empowered. Okay, can I just say it's amazing? Tara Tanaka is lead barista here at Spitzer's Place. You want to meet him, right? She's also one of Karen's former students who was filtering through menial jobs until two years ago when Spitzer's Place opened for business. Geneva Financial Home Loans is a regular here. Immediately when you walk in the door, it is warm and welcoming. Uh, you're greeted with a smile. Today I was greeted with I look like a rock star. Just the kind of good vibes Julie and her Geneva Financial family love supporting. You like to recognize other individuals that take action and make a change and do something to make our world a better place every single day and be the best human that they can be. And Karen and her son Spencer exemplify that. The backbone are our job coaches and I'm gonna get emotional, but I, there's no way I, we would be where we are if they hadn't poured themselves into the training and to our staff. Um, it takes a lot, it, it, it takes a lot. Um, it's a lot of patience, it's a lot of repetition, um, it's thinking outside the box and being very fluid. The staying around here, brewing a stronger community, one cup at a time. The community has been overwhelmingly re receptive. They are, they're everything. We have regulars um, that come here sometimes six days a week, sometimes twice a day. For a lot of them, it's their first experience interacting with someone with a disability. Your name is on the, the coffee shop. How cool is that? It is that cool. <laughs> You're cool. I am kind of that cool. <laughs> so great. Right now, Karen and her staff are raising funds for a second location. This business place is located at Supplies. Uh, they open there through Friday from 7 a.m. to... So just, just, I mean, I kind of says it all. The kids are empowered. They they do have a whole new lease on life. Um, they, there's confidence that I never thought was possible. Um, knowing a lot of our staff previously, uh, it, they've moved mountains. Mountains have been moved. And I did not know what this would look like. I had an idea. I didn't know it would change my life and, and change my world, um, but it has. They have, they are ready to take on the next um, job. Uh, we've always wanted to be a revolving door and um, we can't get rid of our staff. So <laughs> we, we definitely, um, that's a good problem to have, but we don't have room for, for new employees. They have been trained up and they're ready to go into other jobs now. I feel very confident that they, they have the work ethic, they have the skills, um, they, know, they know food really well. They know what you can't do and can't do. Um, we're pretty crazy about staying on for everything um, and they, they'll catch us even sometimes. But this is us, this isn't all of us, but this is um, the majority of us in the picture. And this is, this is also us. This is like every Monday, we start all over. And we have to oftentimes remember where things are on the, on the computer. Uh, we have to re retrain some things that we knew on Saturday when we left the shop, but it's Monday. So a lot of repetition and we sometimes start over with some of the basics because repetition when you're, you have a cognitive delay is part of your task. 
part of the job. And then there's us again. So we, <laughs> we repeat ourselves a lot. Um, some, some minor things, um, you know, when somebody orders a coffee, you have to ask them if they want room for cream. You can't fill the coffee all the way to the top and find out later they want a cream. Um, so just reminding on a, on a Tuesday, I know you haven't worked in three days, but what do we ask when somebody orders a coffee? Um, hot or iced? Yeah, and what else? So it, it's, everything's teachable, and we try to do everything in that moment. So um, if you're considering hiring an individual with a disability, just know that this is a constant. And it just becomes second nature. It doesn't get overly exhausting. It just becomes second nature. It's just like bringing your kids to work every day. <laughs> um, one thing that we've done is we've employed everybody competitively. And we, instead of, instead of employing in the food industry, you can hire at a lower, um, a lower pay and tips can be part of their, um, part of their income. Um, we just hired everybody at minimum wage. So they are all competitively employed. They make a little bit more oftentimes than your standard coffee shop because they're, Set pay is their set pay and it doesn't fluctuate at all. Um, but that does lead into some potential issues. Um, identifying their skill set, knowing that I have, a, I have a, an employee that has had some vocal damage when she was much younger um, due to being on life support or intubated, and she talks very softly. So just knowing that she's not going to be one to call out a, a drink. Your Americano's ready. We've, we've got a job for her and it works beautifully. Um, didn't know that this former student of, of mine would have the capacity to, to bar assist. She sees a need, a bar assist um, takes our utensils as soon as we're done and they wash them and bring them back. I really had pinned her for maybe standing at the door and waving at people and smiling and um, being a greeter and she, she surpassed my expectations. So um, developing an individual plan, knowing who your employees are and feeling them out, just really understanding what makes them tick, what they need specifically. And I go into it on another slide, but it's really important to, especially with behaviors, if an employee has a behavior, um, I now ask everyone, how do you learn best? What do you need? Do you have any triggers? Do things upset you? What do you do when they do when they upset you? Um, I think that's valuable, even with my typical staff, to understand them a little bit better. I, I think it's okay if we check in and we have that peace that because um, not that we can you know fix everything or bounce around and and move somebody into um, a, a job that maybe you didn't identify them for, but just knowing where they come from and what moves them and how they're gonna reach their best self um, definitely has been a, a benefit. Um, and then we have job coaches assigned. So the job coaches, this, this piece does maybe potentially cost a little bit more because we have job coaches that oversee our workforce, but it keeps productivity at, at its highest effective rate. We are paying a little bit more because we have job coaches, but we're producing a lot more as well. So I think in the end, it is um, beneficial and, and cost effective. Um, this untapped workforce has a strong work, work ethic, like, like Jay also pointed out, minimal sick days. Um, they seek clarification with everything. And that can get, um, some mind numbing sometimes. What do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do next? But we we have strategies. Um, don't ask me what to do next. I want you to see a need and fill it. So I send out weekly uh, our focus of the week, and sometimes that's see a need and fill it. Don't ask. I want you to see a need, and then we'll remind them. Uh, they're on time, very on time, uh, very precise. They want to do things well. Uh, they're very driven. 
they have this new found adult life that they probably never thought was possible. The bulk of my um, staff were at home, mid twenties, seeking employment on their own, very capable, but never given a shot, never given an interview, never given a chance. And they were playing video games, they were watching movies. We were in a group chat, my former students and, and families, we stayed in touch for a long time. In this group chat, somebody would predict the weather or let us know that next Thursday it's gonna rain. And like, this is it. I, you, I educated you and you were so prepared and now you're predicting what next Thursday's weather is gonna be like. This is not okay. Um, so thankfully, they are no longer doing that. Um, as a community, we've made great strides and continue to work towards diversity and inclusion, but the employment space for Spencer and people with similar disabilities is far behind. Um, after Spencer graduated, his, uh, his next steps were very uncertain. Um, he was fortunate enough, he went to the day program um, that Francisco worked at, at Advanced Independence, and so he had this very well-rounded he, because Spencer has resources, um, that resources are based on a, a lot of factors. It's a matrix per se, and Spencer meets the criteria based on his cognitive level, his self-help skills. He's fortunate enough to be able to take advantage of resources, but he's one of, I think, maybe I have, I have one other employee that has those same opportunities but the rest did not qualify. They're in this gray area where they do not qualify. Um, so that's where Spencer's place was great. Um, not really even for Spencer because he had something so great in place. Um, and then the, it's a safe environment. They're establishing relationships with the community. The community comes in now and they know their name. They wanna know where Raquel is. She's out of town this week. They wanna know, you know why Raquel wasn't here. It's a Tuesday. Um, it's pretty amazing and then just the the beauty of diversity and inclusion people are, are noting they're taking this seriously they come in and they they with tears in their eyes will tell me I've never talked to somebody with Down syndrome or I've never talked to somebody with a disability they've said I, I've walked past people at grocery stores and smiled and I so badly wanted to interact or say something but I, I don't know what to say. And I'm like, now you don't get a chance. If you want your coffee, you just got faced with a girl with Down syndrome and you gotta talk to her because she's taking your order. And they, a lot of tears and a, just a lot of um, firsts for people. Um, some of the challenges, the, this is the real part. You have to know some specifics regarding disabilities. Um, some, some individuals with autism are very um, overstimulated, get, can get very overwhelmed, or very noise sensitive, not all but some. Uh, a lot of our staff have communication and the majority have processing delays. So the processing delays are where we come in and we really have to ignite these reminders. Um, Strawberry was here on the register last week, actually the year before and the year before that, and it's still there. So when you look for strawberry, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna go to that same spot. Oh yeah, there you go, go So just constantly reminding, um, and then providing a recess space. I think this was invaluable. When we first started in 2019, we had trainings. And in the trainings, I told our staff, when they would come in and they'd have a whole series of worksheets and we would role play and I would say, if you are frustrated, if you're overwhelmed and it's loud and there's a lot of noises in the shop and you're overwhelmed, you get a pass. You're gonna walk away from the situation. You're not going to announce, I need a minute. You're gonna walk away from the situation. You're gonna have two places where you go reset. When you step into those places, we know what that means. I'm gonna give you about five minutes and then I'm gonna come check on you. If you're ready to come back to work, you're gonna know, you're gonna let me know. If there's a bigger issue, you know, like a headache or something going on, you're gonna let me know. Um, I've only had to call a parent 
I can only think of two times where I've said, today's not a good day. Um, can you come pick him up? And that is due to um, sometimes med changes or outside circumstances, but a reset space, they've never taken advantage of it. I, they don't get to take their phone out. They don't get, get to you know, go have fun on the clock, but it has always been effective. And all my staff is trained and they know this is a reset time. Um, repetition, <laughs> repetition, repetition, and then shorter shifts. So our shifts run anywhere from two to four hours. Four is the longest. And that is, and that is plenty. And then we get to bring somebody else in. So it gives more opportunities. And then that is also in part because uh, social security income is very, it, it's a full-time job as a parent to get your adult child on social security. Parents don't want to risk that. They don't want to risk losing benefits. So they want small hours. 10 seems to be the sweet spot. I don't know, Jay, if you have experienced that or if you have, Francisco, but um, benefits don't don't move or you, there's there are no red flags. 10 a week seems to be the, the sweet spot. Um, we, we have to be creative and very mindful because we would never want somebody to lose benefits because they're gainfully employed. It's such a, it's such a travesty that you have to really uh, work around those perimeters, but they're, they're there and they are workable. Um, I, I know that there are also some um, decreased salaries or pay scales that can be put into place as well. Um, we chose not to do that and to just pay everyone competitively, but there are options. Um, let's see. And that is it from us. So our goal, our hope is to, to, to talk about, um, what's that? Miss the internship. Yes. Our goal is to talk about an internship because the biggest piece for us is we've retained our employees very well. It's a safe haven. Um, we don't have any staffing issues, but what we aren't able to do is bring more staff in. Until we open that second location, we are we cannot afford another employee. Um, we have as many employees in our small little shop as a Starbucks does, and we have small hours. So in our in our eight hours, we employ as many as a Starbucks is open, you know, twice as long. So we started an internship program. We have over a hundred applicants, and in the internship program, we provide um, valuable job-related skills, communication skills. Um, they have to get a, a food handler's card if they can't access one on their own. We help them with that. But they come in and they shadow one of our staff. Um, they start with a tour and introductions, and then we kind of test them out, see where, where they can go, and move them into some of the roles. And it's a volunteer position, it's unpaid, it has provided us with such, oh my gosh, such insight that with our interns um, in this six week course, we know that this would not be the proper place for them and we did not make um, the mistake of hiring them and having to let them go or hiring them and just and kind of feeling stuck. So the internship, you would be surprised. There's nobody that has said, oh, I don't want to work for free for six weeks. No, thank you. They're like, sign me up, sign me up. What we want to do is take in the interns, place them in uh, participating businesses. We, we feel pretty confident that we can partner with uh, businesses and get them ready and send them out as well as some of our current staff right now as, as hard as that would be um, there there are some that need to leave the nest they're ready um, so thus far we've been able to play some of our interns um, in one has gone to macy's and works at macy's um, two at popeyes one at a, a local hotel one was able to enter um, college and is in an adaptive college program at concordia in wisconsin 
Um, one of our employees went to Amazon and um, it was too fast paced, so of course we took them back. <laughs> but, but they're at least moving. And they, these, are, these are individuals that were, would never, ever have taken a chance. So um, we would like to offer internship programs or where, where you are even starting an internship piece, um, they're willing, they're willing. If, if at the end of the six weeks, they know that they're either going to get a certificate of completion and a gift card or a job or their application. We keep their applications on file and we tell them as soon as there's an opening, um, you're on track to be hired. So, yes, sir. Was there anything from the state or federal government for creating an internship program that you had to adhere to? Or? No, nothing at all, nothing. Um, what we what we have been able to do successfully though is write a grant for the internships and we get a small portion the city of surprise is so generous and and backs businesses very 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 well um, and we we write a grant it's a reimbursement grant so we are able to get a portion of this reimbursed because we do have to assign a job coach specifically to the interns um, we can't just just throw them into the mix and cross our fingers. So we do have job coaches assigned to them. So it doesn't cover the the job coaches' salary. It cover, covers a, a small portion, but it, it's better than than nothing. Um, let's see. Did I get all the slides? What was your? Go back one. Go back one. Did I miss it? Yeah. Oh, there's the internship. Oh, so this this is just a few weeks ago. This individual, um, and you can read for yourself, he says, and he sends us this, we get a lot of uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, I, I guess it's easier than calling the shop or emailing, and, and you don't have to be seen, I guess. Um, but this is a 19-year-old kid who has severe, severe, severe anxiety. Doesn't leave the house. Um, is terrified to work, has tried to work at multiple different places and lasted three days, is the longest. Um, is not cognitively de delayed. This is mental illness. And he started yesterday. Started our internship yesterday. We started him with one hour a week. Um, did a great job, kept saying, and we start our interns in the afternoon when coffee time is kind of over and it's a quiet place in the coffee shop. And he just kept saying, Wow, it's so chill in here. So, and I informed him of the reset um, rule, and he's like, he almost, he, 19 year old kid who you would never know has a, a disability, um, debilitating disability. He kept saying, "You'll let me do that. You'll you'll let me you'll let me check out." And I said, "Absolutely." And I mean, the one hour yesterday he didn't need to, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's a volunteer position. Again, they're not getting paid and they know that up front. They get a, they get a drink, they get a free drink at the end of their shift. Certificate of completion and then we retain their application for potentially for hiring. Um, it's, it's really, really good. You can, you have that clause that at the end of the six weeks, if it's a see you later, or if we have an opening and you know, they don't have to know whether you have an opening or not, it's not, a parting on bad terms or anything, but if we've had several where I was like, no, this would never, you know, it, it's just not a good fit. We have a, a little feisty one right now who, um, she's a pickle. She's, she, she's a yeller. <laughs> I'm like, ah, it doesn't really work in a quiet coffee shop where people are trying to sit on their laptop and get some work done. And um, so it, it, it is so invaluable. Um, any questions? I think, with Ed, was there anything else? Or Jay, did you have any other input regarding what you do from the Venavia standpoint? Um, we are here as a resource. And I just you know, I want to start by saying you guys are doing an amazing job taking this initiative on. It's amazing. We actually, I don't know if you're familiar with Benavia. We're a nonprofit agency. We're right around the corner here. 
Um, and one of the programs we have is called Helping Partners Program. And it's, it, for all intents and purposes, it's a day program for folks with cognitive and you know, disabled and uh, intellectually challenged adults. Uh, but as part of that, as a spinoff, we have the GSC program where we're trying to find them employment in the community. And it's tough going. You, it like is. you said, it's, uh, there's a lot of stigma around it. There's a lot of challenges around it. But um, you guys are kind of following the same template we are doing. Yeah. So, you know, we just want to offer ourselves as a resource how we can help you. Uh, that's kind of why I'm here. Um, like I said, we've got members working out in the community, but trying to find job coaches and trying to find businesses that are willing to take that, you know, leap of faith that they're going to get something very positive as opposed to just another, you know, ex Amazon employee that is looking for an extra dollar an hour. I mean, it's amazing. So, yeah. um, I, I have a couple questions for you though. Yes, sir. How many interns do you have? Currently, we, we try to keep. We try to do four in, at a time, so four in the six-week period. Mm -hmm. We've had upwards, we've had eight at a time, um, wow. I, and, and that's proven to be a little too much. We have two interns at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a little challenging, but just trying to have a job coach assigned and just time it so that we're not overusing a job coach in that area um, can be a little bit challenging. So currently we have, we have four. And the rotations aren't always, um, you know, six weeks specific. I have an intern that is amazing and I want, I'm gonna hire him. I just don't have a spot. So I said, hey, Craig, you can keep coming as long as you want. And he's like, I get in it? I said, yes. I said, you show up whenever you want because you're amazing. But I said, I will have a job for you. It's probably not gonna be till the first of the year. So I said, so he just wants to come. He's probably been with us for three months now as a volunteer. Where, where are they coming from? I mean, how do they, how do they know to come to Spencer's? Um, they, come, they come in and they ask for a job. Mm -hmm. They come, or their parents advocate. Um, you know, I, I have a son with autism and he's 25 and he's worked at Fry's, but it, it didn't work out. And, um, or he's never had a job, can he apply? Yes, he can apply, but we don't have any job openings. What we do have is this opportunity. He's gonna make friends, he's gonna learn valuable skills, and he can put this on his resume. Um, and they're all over it, so. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I don't think that gets stressed enough. Is this goes way beyond the job itself and learning job skills. Mm -hmm. This turns into huge amounts of life skills for these members. I mean, they, they develop just things we take for granted, whether it's financial skills, relationship skills, you know, just regular living skills. They blossom once they have a, a position. And it's amazing to watch the, how fast they really do grow. I want to back Jay up on that. Um, one of the autistic kids that we hired uh, in the beginning had actually gone to the school with his dad since kindergarten, so I'd known his family for a long time. He came in yesterday, and he worked with us for a year before he left. And he went and started his own business. He would always ask me questions about how do I start a business? How do I do it? it? The name of his business is the Poop Fairy. I love it. <laughs> Everyone and needs they, a Poop Fairy. They go around and clean up dog poop. Yeah. He now has 12 employees. That's amazing. So him and his mom started the business together. He has 12 employees that work with him, and that's all they do. They have accounts all over the West Valley now. I love that. Makes more than I do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But he came back in yesterday to talk to us about it. I knew we were doing it. We did a bunch of marketing to help them out in the beginning, and then it's just taken off. And, but, that's amazing. But like Jay said, they come, they learn these skills, and they and, they and that's the hope. Too. That's the hope. You can't yeah. we you, you can't stay in the coffee shop forever. We've got to move and have the revolving door. Um, and the one thing that I didn't talk about because I don't know enough about it um, are there are tax and payroll breaks and benefits when you hire an individual with disabilities. And um, I think that- yeah, I wish I could talk to you on this. I, unfortunately, I'm just a marketing director over at Benavina. We, because of how much need there is in the community for this, all of our programs are you know, employee capped out. So we're just trying to get census every day. So 
to Gail, who actually runs the program, and our program's director were going to be here today, but they had to stay on site. So we had enough employees for the amount of members we have. Mm -hmm. right. That's something you have to do, so right. I apologize for that. And also my lack of ignorance is I'm not, I help with the program as much as I can, but, but there is, there's tax yes. stuff. Yes. Is it Bob or Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Dan, I'm sorry. Dan, are you familiar with some of these uh, potential <clears throat> write-offs? Um, one that really fits the, everything you talked about here is called the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, or YC. Mm -hmm. um, you can get I think eight, nine, ten thousand. I'm not sure what it is right now per employee, um, and it's designed to encourage hiring people who might not be viewed as your primary hires. So if someone serves time in prison um, or disabled, uh, there's a lot of different things. Some, some of the qualifications are territory. So if there's a, an area that's viewed as suffering economically, there's a number of uh, things that qualify for this. Um, someone that's disabled would qualify and the employer would get a, a large tax credit. The only problem with it is it's very time limited, so you have 30 days to do it when you hire the person. But if someone's going to do that, I can get them set up so that they have a one-page sheet, they fill it out when they hire someone, uh, give it to me, and they get the credit. And, and you know, I've, I was just trying to get the business started and open, and we had so many roadblocks. Um, and I knew about it, I just didn't know what to do. Can I fire all my staff and then rehire them? Is it too late? I don't know. I'm going to look into that for you. <laughs> You're all fired! It used to be a 30 day look back. I don't know if there's a provision for certain categories. Ret retroactive. Exactly. But, so, but something the businesses really need to know. Because I've heard that from so many different people, and um, I, I, you know, I'm ready. I'm at a place now where I think I, my head's about a little bit about water, and I can actually. Well, it, as a business owner, it makes it harder with this, in just my own opinion, insanely forced high minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we when I first built the firehouse, we had the extra income to hire somebody who may not be as high producing, but the higher the minimum wage has gone up, it's forced us to do more with less employees, and to make our employees more. So right. without tax breaks, without tax credits, it makes it harder and harder and harder for us to employ uh, adults with disabilities. Right, but if you had if you had that knowledge Absolutely. and had somebody that can help with that, oh, what a game changer! And that's that's really our goal with all of this is to bring the education to the business community here in Surprise, so it's no longer an unknown, it's no longer a fear, um, you know, in, in hiring in some way that we have all the knowledge and the resources uh, to be able to make it happen plug into this really this great workforce. It is such a great workforce. Yes. Well, and I think that's key with the internship program. I mean, it's amazing how many of these kids just want to have a purpose and, and do something. So having an internship program at your place of business, having one or two individuals that will be a job coach and and grow these individuals. I mean, you'll, you, you kind of have a, a free employee for a little bit, but then you might find that that the job coach has also grown. Um, everybody is growing in, in so many different aspects of life. Um, but also you, you might have a new employee as well at the end of that six weeks. So um, for us having that internship program it has really been key on, on kind of weeding out but but also growing everybody on, on staff and, and individuals with disabilities as well. So, um, it does cost a little bit, but in the end, it, it's a huge return on your investment. I mean, you're gonna get a huge return. And I think too, at, from the interns that we have hired, that went through the intern process and then were, were awarded um, with a job, they, ha they have a different outlook as well. Um, they, they had to earn it. And I'll never hire anyone that doesn't go through the internship piece of, again, ever. I, I, had a, I had a boy who just couldn't, in, in the, heart of the pandemic would slip his hands up under his mask and could not just stop touching his face and it was go wash your hands go wash and then i've already washed my hands and just it was it, it was not the food industry was not the place for him and we're very open everything we do is seen 
Um, there's no behind the scenes anything. So it was, uh, you know, I'm on edge watching him touch his face like, over and over and over and over again and really try to work with him. So at the end of the six weeks, I had that peace of mind knowing that I was going to honor him and send him on his way. Um, they, there weren't even, you know, we do our own labeling um, as opposed to paying for our coffee cups to come in with labels on them. We made sure that we have a job that's kind of behind the scenes where somebody needs to sit, they can stamp the sleeves and we have other jobs like that. I couldn't even really entrust him with that because he was just, you know, violating um, that piece all the time. But having that internship, just knowing that, okay, three more weeks, three more weeks of frustrating him, telling him he has to wash his hands and then that we can be done, but honoring him in that as well um, has been so good. And now he has a job, so yes. Um, Bob and Lisa, do you have any? input i know that you're thinking or talking about maybe having some of your i don't what do you call it? patients clients what do you clients clients mm -hmm. um we, we've always been i love that we can have the clients so necessary that I mean, how do you know none of us knew what the heck we were doing when we transitioned into adulthood so imagine I'm still <laughs> <laughs> let us know what, what do you do here um, any other questions yes Can you talk a little bit more about the job coach so yes. is there a certification is that something an existing employer could just take a you know an employee and say hey you're gonna be the job coach and you're gonna go through a program I mean how does that that's a great question. So our, everyone that we hire is a job coach slash barista. Uh, we have a system manager and we have a manager and everybody has to share in the same jobs. Um, we all scrub toilets, we mop floors, and we um, make sure it's not in that order. <laughs> not in that order. Um, but we, we are all trained to work with our staff. Um, there, there, we do have quite a few that are teachers or former teachers, which it makes it just such a nice, easy transition. We even have a couple that are special ed teachers. Um, but in order to be a barista, you are also trained as a job coach. And that just involves, um, in, in the beginning of the hiring process, I had like a 45 page handbook that I made um, by poor, inaugural staff <laughs> so in, in, in that I listed out um, what is autism what is down syndrome what is spina bifida so just an overview I think of a lot of the disabilities and then you know some of the stereotypes that might coincide and um, it was it was a lot so learning on the job has been probably the most beneficial piece to it uh, we have a uh, mom whose daughter has a disability that is working with us and um, and then I have a high school kid she's one of my athletes um, that that I coached and she came in and I picked her because I, I was like Ariana you'd be really good with the kids and she's amazing so uh, that that has to be part of the process the hiring process is you're going to work with some individuals that have disabilities and this is what it's going to look like and this is what you know we're all going to have these responsibilities so fortunately it's not just when you know when one barista one cashier one job coach everybody wears that hat that's a good question 
Maybe that's part of what we can do with this, is once we have enough uh, employers that are involved, maybe we can put together a seminar. I'd be happy to sit, I've got three or four employees in mind right now, and just us sitting here talking would be fantastic. And maybe just put them through a two hour training program. Yeah. Oh. Place certification. Uh, job coaching training program. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you, it's amazing how they, they come alive and how that innate compassion and empathy and, um, you know, uh, uh, one, one example, one of my employees has never worked with someone with a disability. I've never been around someone. And I knew, I knew she was gonna be good. I just knew and eased into it, asked a lot of questions and she is, she's on fire. She's just on fire. Yes, sir. Yeah, and the, I, I just want to back you up on that. Um, <clears throat> I, I met this guy, Mike, um, years ago when I was in the fire department. We were called for an unconscious person. It was, it was Michael, the first time I met him. Um, homeless guy, schizophrenic. Um, right. Had started using meth as a way of basically to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. um, and we worked with him in the fire department for years. He's just a sweet guy. Um, eventually, he did go to a, an adult program that helped him sober up. There was this new medication that they could give him as a shot, so he would agree on taking that. And he would be almost normal for about three weeks, and then it would start to wear off. <clears throat> but for a couple of years, he would just come in and have lunch with me. We'd just sit out there and talk. Um, he was always kind of dirty. Um, but he, one day, instead of asking for food, he started asking for a job. You know, I said, you know, Michael, I would love to be able to give you a job, but you know, you have to have an ID, you, you have to be clean when you come in here, you have to, okay, 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 okay. You know, you say, okay, buddy. And for like three weeks in a row, he showed up, like, his pants were ironed. I mean, he was like completely clean and he was shaved. And, you know, can I have a job now? Can I have a job? Like, well, you gotta have to have a bank account. You gotta have, you know, get your social security card. You gotta go through all these things. And I, I didn't think he would, to be honest with you. And it wasn't like I was throwing it at him right. to keep him from being hired, but I was like, these are the things you have to do. Two weeks later, he comes back in clean. He says, okay, well now you gotta fill out an application, can you do it? And so we hired him, really the only job that he could really do, and he loved it, was uh, our sign guy. Your sign guy, yeah. He was dead I remember him, I remember him. But it was, he was odd to interact with. Yeah. Um, but the employees loved him. They took him under their wing, even though he was uh, like 32, I think he was. Um, the employees loved seeing him when he came in. He was always happy, he was always smiling calling everybody buddy, hey buddy, hey buddy. Uh, and even our our uh, our customers. Yeah. You know, it, well at first, when we first hired him to do the sign, because he, he wasn't the most interactive sign guy. Um, he would just kind of sit there with his chair and he would sit back with an umbrella. And I had people call me, hey, your sign guy needs to get fired. <laughs> Once I, I did a whole video and a post about him to put it out and let everybody know who he was. Um, the public just embraced him. Absolutely loved him. They didn't see him on the corner. I started getting messages. Of, Where's Michael? Is he okay? What's he doing? Oh. Um, there's so many benefits from it. It is a little bit of extra work, but my goodness. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and it, it, as far as your other staff, your typical staff, um, they rise up. They they rise to the occasion. It, it's incredible. And if they don't. I mean, there might not be the person you want there anyways. <laughs> Checking the box, you know, showed up for work, did and my job. That was the other thing that you were priceless with. Because one of my, I guess, the things that held me back from hiring at first that I was nervous about um, was I didn't want to have to fire somebody that had a disability. Like the, to be the guilt behind that, really. And I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty mentally strong guy, but to be able to have to sit someone down and go, I'm sorry. Like, I know you worked really hard on this job, there's a lot of good things, but I'm gonna have to let you go. Yeah. It was something I shied away from. from I shied away from hiring more because I didn't want to have to anymore. Right. Now, I love the idea of this intern program. That's, I right. have Right, you don't have to fire anybody. Right. At the end of the six weeks, you know. You, yeah. you know or, or you don't know, and. And they still feel accomplished. They mm -hmm. still learn skills. And I keep reminding them, I'll say, okay, and, you know, you have three weeks left, and at the end of the, this is what I want you to do in these next three weeks, and then you'll get your certificate, and you get a gift card, and just keep reminding them. Um, 
And then I, and I have extended it for quite a few people because they weren't ready to go. I wasn't ready to let them go, and I still don't have an opening. So, um, any any questions? And and as far as having to fire someone, you sometimes you just have to treat them like any other employee. You gave them ample. You gave them more opportunities than a, a typical employee that you know you would have fired them a long time ago. So you did, you did everything that you could, and it's okay. So that's going to happen sometimes. Yes, ma'am. So for the internship, was there anything that you had to do to make it official? In terms of, I would just hate to think often, like you know, I hired someone, but not pay them. Right. To work for six weeks. Right. No. As soon as I, as soon as they ask for a job, and I tell them we don't have any job openings, but what we have is this opportunity. If you want to come. Um, just experience what it's like to, to be in a coffee shop and what see the behind the scenes and to make some friends. Um, and then, you know, just letting them know I'll keep your application on, on file. Um, and then what I do, I have an iPad and I sit down with them and we go over um, goal setting. So I'll sit down and I'll put their name in and I'll say, this is what we're going to do today. This is what I want you to, and the first day is always just observation. You're going to take a tour of the shop. You're going to be introduced to everybody, and you're just going to watch. I just want you to watch the interaction. Um, and then I, I think because the foundation has been laid, um, I have preset the expectation that at the end of the six weeks, we will part ways. There's never been an issue. There have been with parents. There have been with par a lot of parents. I mean, there's... There's issues with parents left and right. I've been um, yelled at for not hiring. I'm, um, you know, you walk in the shop and, um, you know, Bob and Lisa and Ed probably know this better than anyone, but you walk in and, and you see how many staff we have behind the bar. It's crazy. Um, and for parents to walk in and not understand that that's, that's, we're really heavy on the staff side. But let's go ahead and squeeze your child in because you you yelled the loudest. Um, it does get that's hard. When when we first started, I cried all the time. This mom said that I'm a liar because I hire individuals with disabilities, but I won't hire her son, and I've never met her. But to, behind the scenes, it's easy to write an email, um, and I I was I was devastated, and I couldn't figure out how to keep hiring, and, and so I kept hiring, and so um, at one point we had to stop. <laughs> had to be, I'd be reminded that this is not going to benefit anyone when we go in the sinkhole. So um, just constantly laying that foundation. Like, oh my gosh, you're halfway through your internship. You've done a fabulous job. Um, and then I'll ask them, where do, where do you really want to work? Have you always dreamed of working in a coffee shop? Well, no. Where do you really want to work? Someone said, um, Big Five. They wanted to work at Big Five. Okay, I think you can be big five ready by the time that we're done with this. So, and, and a lot of them are, are a lot of the young adults are coming in and they do, have never had a job, so they need these basic job skills. They need um, just eye contact and and not touching their face and, and all that. So, uh, with the internship program, it really helps them to to learn these skills. But also, what we say is, you you get a reference. So when you want to go to Big Five, they can call us up and say, yeah, this guy was great, and this is what he could do, and all this. And so that's the value of the internship program. Not only can we maybe get an employee, but also we can send them off knowing that they have some basic skills and a job reference to, to hopefully get a job and retain that job. So. Yes? Does the internship program have is the first step in application? Yes. They have to fill, and, and we've had, I've had parents like tell me that's not fair, but they have to fill out an application. Ours is very, very simplistic. Fill out the application. You have to fill it all out. I don't have any references. You do have references. Did you have a teacher? Well, yeah. What would your teacher say about you? Did, you? did you go to church anywhere? Did you have a youth leader? Did you, you know, have you ever babysat? Have you, um, you know, tell me some of the things that you've done. You have references, and you have to fill that piece out. Um, I don't usually call them, but I want them to go through those steps. And they bring the application in. 
we set up an interview and we, we do it just like a job. And during the interview, I did one, one person, and I went ahead and, and took her on as an intern. Um, but there was one person that had been hospitalized for um, I, maybe violence, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's so much that you, know, you, you also have to be very careful with because of FERPA, things of that nature. So um, I just, I was like, I'm gonna keep a really close eye. She was fine. Um, but she had definitely some pretty significant behavior issues because when she told me the school she went to, I know um, from my background that that's a pretty, pretty strong behavioral school. And then um, she would say, oh, I can't, my ABA therapist is coming over. I can't work Thursdays because I have my, and I, I know that that's a behavior. And so um, I went ahead because I, she interviewed well and I thought I would give her a shot, but at the end of the six weeks, it was goodbye <laughs> for sure, for sure. And then there are interns I've said, no, you know, um, I'll call you and never, you know, have hired them or brought them in, I guess, because um, there are some that it's a definite no. Um, in the, with the food, there I have a, a young man who really wants to work, but he, he drools, he can't control um, the motor function and can't do that at the shop. Cannot do that. So. Yeah, I mean, there's always some no's, and that's just part of life. And I and I and I would create jobs all the time. I'd say, okay, he can't do that, but we can have him outside picking weeds and cleaning. You know, he can at least wipe down tables and things like that. But there, there, and I've done that, and, and there was just too much crossover um, behind the bar, and it, you can't tell someone, oh, you are just you need to stay outside the whole shift because you drool. Um, just don't want to ever hurt someone or or do that. So. Um, it, it's definitely not charity. I, 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 I want to say it's not charity. It's not, um, I'm going to bleed myself dry for you. Um, I'm a bleeder and I am, my skin's getting thicker and I'm doing a much better job at um, saying my best yes and my best no. So um, I would definitely say that it is, the internship piece is still not for everybody. Um, I got kind of tricked into a few high school kids and we only hire adults with disabilities and you know didn't know they were homeschooled and they 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 looked like they were older or whatnot so um, when they said they're out of school what they meant is they're out of public school <laughs> and they're still in school and um, they if you're in high school you have all the resources you need you have friends you have field trips, you have Special Olympics, you have great resources, you have teachers, you have all the things, and, and that's been another um, issue with parents is not hiring teenagers. I'm like, I, I can't hire teenagers. These adults have nothing. Their parents go to work, they have nothing. So. So this inaugural, I guess, get together meeting uh, slash seminar, we sat and we talked about who we wanted to invite, who were the kinds of people to be here for this for a couple reasons. One, it is the very first one. Um, but we want to get feedback from everybody on what were your thoughts, what were some of the ideas that you had. Brainstorming with us, you let us know, you know, wow, when Karen was saying this, this triggered something in my head. So if you've taken any notes like that, um, get hold of Karen, myself, or whatnot, email us um, and let us know. Because I know, I, I think everybody here would like to see this grow. Uh, so if you guys have any ideas with the organizations that you work with and the businesses that you have on how there's more information that you need or ideas that pop in your head that can better serve you as a business owner, absolutely reach out and let us know. And it's so cool that Vogue is, is here and represented because, um, you know, I think we can, we could even have like a, a short trial with an intern, um, no commitment at all with somebody that might be um, you know, great at assisting a busser or, and then and you're not out anything because it's just the internship piece at this point. So I think that would be a super cool um, panel.
comparing. Yeah, and one of the things that kind of makes a lot of sense is the, you know, they only, we only want, you know, an hour, maybe two hours for a lot of reasons. You know, is it somebody that helps us set up in the morning when it's quiet and it's not a right. lot going on and, you know, they can just do their own thing? And we still, I mean, I still need 200 sets of silverware rolled up into napkins. Right. It's like, it has to get done at some point, so it doesn't matter what time. Yeah. Um, or if it's somebody who is, you know, okay with, hey, there's a lot going on right now, you know, but I'm okay to like jump in and help, whether it's helping the busser or helping, you know, wash dishes in the back. My real, you know, the, the peak business is, you know, the six to seven oh, yeah. time. Come in, it's crazy for an hour, <coughs> and then, yeah. you know, I'll send you home with, you know, a side of fries or somebody made an Vogue extra cheeseburger chips? or whatever. Vogue okay. chips. That's free. That's a premium on Vogue chips. Not giving those away. Because <laughs> ah, I was going to volunteer. Well, and even, even a busser position is, is great. One of our guys, Sean, that we hired, that's, he loved it. He obviously, because he got to interact with customers. And that's all he did was put our tables and wipe and sweep. And he loved being out there in the dining room the whole time. Yeah, uh, and, and I was just talking to her a little bit before we started. Uh, before coming to Arizona, we had the college officers. So we did have a few special needs individuals. And uh, the, the most popular position was the host position, which <coughs> They literally would just go around and make sure that the lobby was clean and inviting, and they would say hi to people. There's no reason that that still can't translate. Right. Sure. You know, for for me, hosting would include hi, welcome in. You know, do you have a reservation? And then take them to their table with a menu, have a nice dinner, kind of thing. And that's, you know, I have a little iPad that says table you know, twelve is here. Right. I can see it's right there. So there we go. So yeah, I definitely think there's 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 room and ways that I can make this work. And, and, and you know, not as a charity thing, but it would still help us out. Also. Right, absolutely. And I love, um, if you haven't seen the sticker, um, it's a sticker that can go in the window that basically says we are, I mean, we are inclusive. We're an inclusive workforce. Um, so as a parent of an individual with a disability, if I'm going to choose a restaurant um, and I see that sticker that we're inclusive, we hire individuals with disabilities, um, I, I'm picking that every day of the week. I actually have it printed up, and there at least a, a mock of it, but this is what it looks like. And for businesses, I think breaking down that, that barrier, breaking down that stigma, breaking down the fears of hiring uh, these, these individuals um, is key for the business community. I mean, as a, before I, knew this wonderful individual i mean i i had never interacted with somebody with a disability and and it, honestly it was fearful i was i was afraid and um but as time goes on and, and all that you you learn about these individuals and they're just the same as as anyone else but it's just breaking down that that barrier and and educating people and business owners i mean especially i mean with all these uh, the industry coming in uh, these adults with autism with their, their rote uh, just kind of robotic way of doing things I mean it's ideal for, for these individuals I mean even just doing the napkins thing they will do it one way and will not Every stray from that yeah. it, the silver <laughs> will be placed exactly how it is and, but that's how their mind works and I mean for Ball and for Red Bull and all these other um, places it's ideal so we just have to break down these barriers and, and hopefully the, the stickers, but getting it out into the community that uh, there's a workforce out there. You just need to have a little patience, have a little time and be willing to, yeah. to It's an investment. It's just, it's an investment. But it's a huge return on your investment. I, I guarantee it. I, I do have to give kudos to okay. Amos back here. It was No Batteries Marketing that designed that, that logo for us. It's so good. I, I, it's so good. Years. I love it. You guys did an awesome job. And I don't have green tea, Chris, but I do have black tea. I know, I'm sorry. And green tea goes through the group project. I know, I know. <laughs> what were you saying? So, question for you. And again, I'm sorry I missed a lot of this, but, you know, um, our experience, we, we did hire somebody with a physical disability. She actually still works for us. She works from home. She does phenomenal work. Um, you know, as 
an employer, what is the appropriate way to go about talking to somebody that has a disability about their limitations or like, that's always been my fear as an employer is what's, what are the boundaries with that? And how do we go about approaching? Because I have like, I have found, you know, we've had interns with autism, uh, one of our ASU's uh, internship program and they've been phenomenal writers. Yeah. Like, we have found it, like an extreme amount of talent there. Um, so they go on to do great things, which is awesome. But you know, talking to them about the disability, like I'm always self-conscious about that, and like I don't want to violate anybody's rights. Or, right. So I think probing, probing, and asking, um, what, what are your needs? How can how can I best facilitate, um, you know, your job? What what are some needs that you might have? And then it's amazing how they'll open up and say, well, I get. Um, you know, really anxious. I, on our screen is an individual that just came right out and said, I have debilitating anxiety um, because he's obviously been trained to do that. Um, I don't know if it's parenting or I don't know if it's school or I, I don't know if he's just 19 years old and strong enough to advocate for himself. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to ask, um, is there anything that, that you want to tell me about you? How can, how can I get to know you? I think you'll sense or how do you hear, learn? How do you how learn? How do you learn best? Right. I mean, and I'll, I'm not, I can't speak for my clients, but you know, we represent a lot of businesses out there and a lot of businesses desperate for people. I and, know. You know, again, this is a perfect outlet for that, but I think, you know, I, I can speak for myself, it, it does make you really nervous to yeah. approach that. Yeah. I absolutely. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know, like, how that all works. And, you know, you want, you want to facilitate that inclusive environment, and certainly there's I, I think if you um, kind of turn it on them, how um, even if you don't know if they have a disability, because again, character mm -hmm. traits are not always evident. Um, so you went to such and such school. Um, how how do you learn best? What ask just probing and asking those questions. I, one of the questions that I ask is how how do, well do you take correction? And I had a boy say not very well. <laughs> and I said, thank you for, thank you for telling me. And um, I, I brought him on, but um, <laughs> he did not take correction very well, and he was not wrong. Yeah. But I knew, at least I had that, that red flag where I knew I was not going to trigger him. Yeah. Um, and, and for six weeks, that's it. And then we, we parted ways. But, parents, um, parents are a great resource. I mean, is that appropriate to engage the parent? And I mean, I, I have felt when we hire or when we go out for the internships, they want to do things on their own. And right. So, and, and you're you're probably dealing with a different um, capacity. Sure. Um, so, you're especially if they're already designated interns. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think just, just probing, if, if there's a red flag or if you're, you're identifying something, uh, just asking, how do you learn best? Do you, how, how can I help you? Or I think that they will lead into that um, as opposed to saying, do you have a disability? What is it? Um, <laughs> which I wish we could be that blunt and that forward because it would only benefit everybody. Um, but you do have to be a little calculated in, in the way that you phrase things. I don't know, I, I don't know how much of a violation or FERPA or, or it is to um, flat out ask someone, you know, or is there, um, is there anything that I need to know about you that, that you'd like to share with me? That's mm -hmm. always a good lead in. Yeah. And, it, and if they don't, then that's kind of on them. Sure. And if they it, if it doesn't work out, then they didn't advocate properly. So, is there anything else? We have subs galore, holy cow. There's subs, there's um, iced tea.